to ask questions around your control assessment. Remember, it's about the strengths and weaknesses of the rivals to Clark's, the butchers. All right, so there's two areas that you must be aware of. One is the, 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 the meat, the butcher part of the, of the business, and the second one is the baguette part of the business as well. All right, so for you now, you need to be thinking about the questions that you're asking on your questionnaire around unique selling point, product range, quality. Uh, what else, sir? Uh, value for money. Value for money, customer service. And there, there's what. They're the main ones. Because there's only two strengths and two weaknesses yeah. in detail, so if they, if they cover those, you should. And remember, you are going to put these into. Boys, listening, this is 25% your GCSE, so you need to focus in. Remember, the questions that you ask will put, help you with your research. And what we're expecting you to do is bring in charts about what you found on that research and be able to do a peer paragraph showing whether it's a strength or whether it's a weakness of that business. Okay, you're now going to listen to this next one. So Brian Clark, who is all about, learned to train the family books of business established in Liverpool by his father and uncle in the 1950s. <coughs> Along with his brothers, he worked after school at weekends with his uncle in the family business. After leaving school, he, he soon progressed to managing one of the family shops. In 1976, he opened a shop in Seabank Road, New Brighton, moving eventually in 1987 to Allerton Road. Can't pay attention. South Liverpool, where Brian Clark has become, where Brian Clark has become known as Liverpool's finest butcher shop, and the only one still purchasing its meat on the hoof from local farmers. Buying full carcasses means that all those chef cuts of meat for special recipes are readily available for our customers. Says Brian, we are now seeing a move back towards traditional breeds such as Hereford, Galloway, and Welsh Black Beef, and the Tamworth and Gloucester Old Spot Old Spot pork, which is off which offer the consumer a real taste of meat as it should be. All of our beef is hung in a mature mature to mature for 28 days to ensure the flavour and tenderness of the meat. Over the years, Brian, wife and children all became involved in the business, building a reputation for offering a range of fine foods, including lunchtime baguettes, heat and eat ready meals and any cut of meat. Clarks also offer the unique service of cooking your Sunday roast for you. They hint that one. Just let, let them know the time you want to collect it and they will have your joints of meat and chicken or chicken perfectly cooked and ready for you to enjoy. The Clark's, the traditional butcher from the 21st century, sells a range of traditional and rare breed quality meats, home cook, cooked meats, delicious homemade sausage rolls, ready meals as well as um, homemade sausage burgers, marinated meats and handmade kebabs. They also offer a range of ready prepared party platters including the finest cooked meats, barbecue ribs, and chicken. Okay, so there's the unique selling point of the um, roast joints ready for you. Okay. I've just had them all to see. Right, any questions first? Go on. Go on. You, you do all the ready meals and all that kind of stuff, and you bring a chef in to do that? No, no. When you say ready meals, it's more the marinated meats already and things like that. So chicken stir fries, they're some furries really for convenience that people can just take home. It's like marinated chicken, kebabs, um, stir fries that are already done. <coughs> and then we do a few products that are already cooked so people just have to take them home and heat them up and things like that really. So who is it? Just yeah, yeah, staff. Yeah, just use recipes and stuff from. Recipes that we've had for years really. Um, and then we do bring new things in, but we stick with what we know, things like that. A lot of it's for convenience. Go on, anyone? No? So what, what do you need to know for what you're doing? Competition, who do you think our main competitors are for me? Who do I have to keep up with? Yeah, so if my customers aren't gonna to come to me, We've got Tesco's, we've got Asda. So how do you think I compete with them? Or how would you compete with them? Make your products better. Make what? Make your products better. Yeah, that's, that's the main thing. You can compete on prices. But in my experience, if you can offer something better than what the supermarkets offer, you're on a winner straight away. Okay, Matty, what were you going to say then? Quality. Quality, yeah, it is. I think with any business, especially with food, it's quality, quality, service, um, 
you want your repeat business. Convenience. I, I've got a downside. Where, does everyone know where we are on Allerton Road? Like parking surrenders for people and things like that. So sometimes if the weather's bad, one thing I can't compete with is the weather. People will go to Tesco's, park in the car park, and they might think, oh, I'm not walking along Allerton Road, I'll get the meat here. That's one downfall. I can't compete with the weather or anything like that. Go on, sorry. Come Tesco and not have a better advertising yeah, well they've got the TV, haven't they? How much would it cost to put that there on the TV and things like that? And the other thing that's an advantage, they did a thing, didn't they, a few years ago where they opened 24 hours. That's something I can't compete with. But what I did, probably going back about eight years ago, was open on a Sunday. Never wanted to. But we found that if people wanted to do the shopping, you've got more housewives that work and things like that. So the weekend, if we only open on a Saturday, we're limiting our business, aren't we? So we have to do Sunday opening. And then Christmas, Easter, things like that, we have to do a late night as well to compete with the supermarkets. Twitter and Facebook and stuff? Not yet, no, because I can't police it. I'd like to, but because we're in a small premises and it's mainly like shop floor based, if I was doing any online stuff, which is the way forward, or I've got a Facebook page actually, which to me more runs, but then I'd have to have someone checking that daily or so that side of it. So until I could do it 100% properly and no one could do it, I don't really want to venture into that yet. So I'm keeping it to more like on foot, isn't it, if you like. Oh, what um, sort of percentage of your customers are customers who come back again I'd like and to again. think all of them, really. If that's one of your main things in business. You get a customer, you want them to come back. So one of the things that we strive on, like I think with Tesco's, you can go to Tesco's, you can get poor service at a checkout, you don't get any interac interaction. The woman on the till's having a bad day, you just stood there, it's boring, isn't it? But with my staff, I train them so that I want the customer to come in the shop, I want them to be served well, I want them to go out thinking, oh, I'll go there again. Not, with just, not just because of the product, but because of the service that we've had as well. You need to make a note of this as, as Ricky's going to, so that's one of the strengths of the business. The, the other thing is about the parking. Is it all family one? It's like all the, the work people. <coughs> no. No. Um, my mum and dad started it a years ago and they're semi retired now. So I'm in there full time and then my my next in line, if you like, he's worked for us for about twenty five years. But a lot of the, the majority of the staff that we've got have all been with us for like 10 years, 20 years, things like that. It's worth in fact investing in your staff. How many staff do you employ? On Saturday I had 10 in. So there's some part-timers as well. 10, 11, because I had someone in the office on Saturday, yeah. Yeah, so that's just the way it is. No. No, not at all. If the shop next door became available. No. no. If a shop became available for what Mr. Levy was saying before, has anyone had any of the gets that we do at lunchtime? Yeah. That was that was a gamble a few years ago for us because the shop's only small about doing like a cooked food section and it's been really more successful <coughs> than we thought it would be. And the only way I'd expand would be to do the baguettes into another shop. So if we can close the chippy down on the next block, that would be absolutely ideal because then I could move like the hot food to there and bring our shop more as a traditional butchers and things like that. We, should, we really struggle for space. So that, we could say that's a weakness as well, and you struggle because with the, with the raw meat and the cooked meat, you've got to be really careful, haven't you, with, yeah. the, with the housing yeah. and stuff? Yeah, yeah. The health, the health side of it is just a constant yeah. nightmare, paperwork and things like that. So if you've got separate premises, years ago, butcher shops, we're all thinking about just having a, a cooked food section and you'd have to get served separately and then another section because of the health side of it. So it's just, we've just got to be on the ball all the time. Right, so Iceland are going to like kangaroo meat and crocodile and all that. Have you tried anything like yeah. that? Yeah, years ago um, I was trying to get kebabs, you know, like the skewers. When the weather's hot, all anyone wants is like burgers, oh, sausages, geez. kebabs, things like that. All for, for barbecue, so we started doing, we going back 20 odd years ago, kebabs on skewers already made. We didn't see them then. And I did a gimmicky thing um, where I made kangaroo kebabs. 
and all it was for was just you know advertising. We haven't said anything about advertising. <coughs> I did these kangaroo kebabs <coughs> years ago, just as an advertising gimmick and to get people talking that were selling kebabs and things like that. I can't get it, but like one in a hundred people. Much for it. No, no, not at all. How do, you, sorry, how do you advertise and promote the business? Um, word of mouth is my strongest way of advertising, repeat business. And then I brought some of these in to see. I all, always have leaflets about where the stuff comes from and things like that. So I think educating your customer is a way of advertising. Pass them around. Um, and we used to do local papers and things like that. Yeah, like yeah, and the echo. Well, it's dead expensive to be perfectly honest. And it's whether it's whether you get enough it's whether you get enough business from what the adverts cost you and things like that. So we will advertise at like Christmas and Easter. <coughs> Do you know about how much more expensive you are than Tesco in terms of what? I'd say we're on par with Tesco's, but a lot of your big supermarkets have the luxury of doing something called like a loss leader. Yeah. Or where uh, I can't shout so do us a favour. They'll do like supermarkets will do a loss leader where they'll sell lamb one week and won't make profit on it whatsoever and that's just to get people in because we've got all the other products as well for people to buy so that's a slight disadvantage i have so i do have to watch like what's on offer and things like that in supermarkets and then drop my profit sometimes to try and match them <coughs> yeah yeah not very often because you can when I say lose money, yeah, I've just lost money, for instance, at Christmas, I overbought on something. It wasn't a lot, it was like um, probably 100 quid's worth of gammon, you know, everyone has like gammon and stuff like that at Christmas. But I'm like, so I had overstock, and then went away on holiday on Boxing Day, <coughs> and I could come back and it's gone out to date, and there's nothing to do with it. The staff should have really dealt with that while I was away, and put it, put it on offer, so I put the price on it to sell it faster um, and when you buy it sometimes as well if say my supplier or my farm makes a mistake and I haven't checked it or my secretary hasn't checked it like I had an overcharge of 50 quid last week on something it was only the fact that I checked it that I got onto it but apart from lose money in what, what do you mean lose money how no profit we only with <laughs> only through careless buying or um Generally, something I've done wrong, or if something comes in that's not right, or I'm not happy with it, I wouldn't sell. If I look decent myself, I wouldn't sell it. That sort of thing. What's your biggest seller? What What can you offer the most of seller? What's your best product? Best product, the baguettes. The baguettes are the biggest seller. Oh yeah. 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 Big time. Um, chicken, I suppose. Everyone still eat. Everyone's got the thing. I'm giving chickens healthy. Um, might be just like chicken. We sell three different types of chicken for three different types of customers. Organic, free range, and then barn reared. And it's because different people want different things. Anyone else? What's the worst? What's the worst seller? Uh, liver and heart, probably. <laughs> <laughs> or ox tongue. Yeah. Oh, and what? Ox tongue. Sure, you need that? I've eaten it, yeah. I've had anything, really. Ox tongue is the cow's tongue. It's skinned, oh, cooked, oh, pressed oh, and sliced. Oh, and people have it on sandwiches. What kind of smiley death ones are in for dinner? Should have brought you some in to try, shouldn't I? <laughs> or hearts, liver. Who are your, who are your main suppliers? We now buy beef. Um, <coughs> when you go back to competition, if you could try them, I don't know if you get it. Tesco's, Asda and things like that, they've got so many stores. Can you imagine the volume of meat that they're buying in? They can't police everything that they're getting in. So like you could go to Tesco's, buy a piece of steak, and it might it might be that great because they've had a bit of a crap animal come through or something like that. Because we're smaller, we can police what we buy so that we, we know that the quality each and 
each time we serve a customer, it's going to be there. So we've recently gone to Scotland for our beef, <coughs> and we use a set of farmers up in Scotland because I can't match the quality. I've always dealt with Wales, and I'd like to keep it more local, but I can't match the quality and the price that I'm buying stuff for up there. So that, that's got to be one of your strengths that you put down in there, and a weakness for the, uh, the, the rivals, isn't it? They can't police the quality of the product coming in. They can't. Tesco's has to can't physically sell that much stuff and make sure that each and every cut of meat's right. I don't think, well, to buy a piece of steak in Tesco or to buy a piece of steak in our, in our shop, it might be. Say it saves you a pound buying the Tesco's, but you're not going to get the quality anywhere near. And for people who are into their, the health side of things as well, <clears throat> a lot of the meat that supermarkets sell will be pumped full of antibiotics, pumped full of growth hormone, which that's something that loads of people don't know. And you actually, say an animal's taking antibiotics or taking medication, then you eat it. You're putting all that into your body. But the stuff that we sell, hasn't had any of that and things like that. So if someone comes in and goes and says to me, you're expensive, and I go, yeah, we are a bit more expensive, but I, start, I can stand by it if you get what I mean. So for saving yourself a pound, it's whatever you'd want to do, really. Have many other butcher shops closed down in the yeah. area? Yeah, a lot of them, really, because a lot of butchers never kept up with the demands for things, and we're very stuck in the ways, and like, how many people here want to finish school and be a butcher as well? You've got no one going into the trade. So that it is a dying trade, but I think it'll come back and it, it should be more. But the way that's another thing, the wages aren't great and I don't think I've met one person who says when I finish school I want to be a butcher. Don't know why. Okay. Question over there. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go on. Um my latest complaint that I've just got back off my holiday was a customer of mine. You know, what would you do in this situation? You talk about your key business. A customer of mine, she's been my customer for 25 years. Buys a turkey off us every year. The same turkeys that we've sold for the past 15 years. So nothing's changed on that. Came back, she waited for me to come back and said, look, can I have a little word with you? So they cooked the turkey this year, it was tough. 300 turkeys I sold, and that's the only one complaint I've had. I want to say to that customer, she probably spent 60, 70 pounds on the turkey. I want to say to that customer, well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Jones, or whatever, I think you've overcooked it because I was 300 turkeys. I haven't had another complaint. But so that I don't lose a custom for the next 10, 15 years, or whatever, no questions asked, just a refund straight away. Um, other complaints? No, not really. What about all you, what about all you lose out then? Yeah. What do you lose out in the long run? No, no. So, I know she's overcooked it because we used to sell that much stuff and no one else has complained or anything like that. And she, she said to me, the top part of the act bed when she cooked it was tough, and I'm like, well, she overcooked it and she's done something wrong. You say do or lose out in the long run. How much? But for the sake of 60 quid that she spent, if I have a come into the shop twice a week for the next 10 years, I'm going to get that back on her rather than losing us to her. You just said to her, like, just like, I don't know, you just said to her, like, nice to meet me, like, I'm going to say, so don't, oh, don't you think you've overcooked yeah. it? But she might have gone, no, I haven't. And then she's never come back again. So I, I can't be bothered, it's just a case of going, yeah, it's fine, yeah, yeah, have, you, yeah have the beef, but, and sometimes as well, if you have a customer complaints, or someone was being snotty with you, yeah, that's you. It's, I just, you just can't be, it's like, yeah, okay, fair enough, there you go, and you know you'll get her back, and then she could go to her mates or whatever, and say they shop with us, she's going to say, oh, I wasn't happy with it, but Victoria dealt with it really well for me or something, so it's a plus all the time, isn't it? Don't you still like use mad tricks to like to you know keep? keep what are you insinuating? Stuff like you know, I don't I don't think it happens now so much with the health and safety. But there used to be all kinds of and and I want you to tell these some of the ones that used to be. Like what? Like what do you mean? It's like dye stuff or bleach stuff or like. Oh, I don't know. Like, 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 I don't
like yeah. when things were going a bit off and stuff yeah. like that. All that. I mean, the health are all over you nowadays. You can't really move without the ha having to write stuff down. But yeah, 30, 40 years ago, butchers would mince your liver. So say you get minced beef, you're making like a chilli or something like that, so that it looks red. Butchers used to put like liver in with it because it'll give it like a red appearance and make it look lean and things like that. But what you get nowadays, you wouldn't get away with it because you'll have some government official that does my head in will come in and they'll say, right, we're here today and we've got like little pots and they'll take a sample of our minced beef, take it away, test it so that to check that there's nothing else in it. Or say that we've used the mincer, people who don't eat pork, for instance, say we've used the mincer and put pork through, we have to completely wash the mincer before we do any beef because so that there's no trace of it or anything like that. That was a, an old trick. What else? I have a two pence piece on the scale so everything weighed more years ago. That was one. <laughs> that was one as well. When, when there was the, uh, the horse meat scandal a couple of years ago with the supermarkets, did that affect you in terms of the, business? Did the, more people yeah. come or...? Well, does anyone remember the horse meat scandal? What happened? Tesco. Tesco. It was Tesco in Iceland, wasn't it? And it was found in all, like, um, your ready meals. So, like, you go to Iceland or Tesco and buy a lasagna. You just stick it in the oven or something like that. They found horse meat in it. Um, <coughs> yeah, I, well, I, I cashed in on that amazingly. Um, because straight away people were coming in to buy like our mints and talking about it and then I was approached by, I think it was Radio Merseyside, never been so nervous in my life and did like a, a live interview, I was like, like that on the live interview, trying to tell people like and prom promote us and things like that and then the Echo run a story on us. So within a week we had 30% extra trade. Have you have you seen um, when supermarkets really got the power and you know the economies of scale? Like, have you seen people come now coming back to the yeah. pictures? Yeah, the yeah. last five years. Another thing to talk about competition that I can't compete with in the supermarkets is if you look at Alec Road, yeah, look at the top of Smith Down, yeah, to Tesco's down here. And in 20 odd years I've been on Alec Road, when I first came, from down Smith Down Road, you've now got an Asda, then you've got an Aldi, that wasn't there years ago. Then you come further down, you've got... Tesco. Where Tesco you got? Oh yeah, another Tesco there, on the end of Green Bank Road. Then you come further along, yeah, you've got your little Tesco. By the Richmond, you've got Iceland, Asda, another Asda there. So in the last 20 years, the amount of supermarkets, and that's something that you can't compete with, that are just there for people to go to. And before we moved to Liverpool, we had shops on the Wirral. And what we found, the Wirral, a bit more open space and things like that. We had a successful shop in like a real working class area. Good shop back in its day. And what happened, three miles up the road, I think it was a bit, yeah, it wasn't, it was a big Asda opened and it just wiped this whole shopping centre out. We were sort of going back to like, I think it was late 80s and you, you saw like a thriving area and then people would just get in the car, drive up to the Asda that was in Bromra rather than all getting the bus and stopping and shopping at the fruit and veg shop, shopping at the fish shop and that's where we saw on the Wirral. Before they did it in Liverpool, they started doing it on the Wirral and they were opening shops here, there and everywhere, but they just, did wipe like little little communities out. That's why they had that day where they shut down early. On what the supermarkets? Well, they definitely never used to open Sundays. Sundays used to be a dead day, and then Sundays opening, late nights opening, twenty four hours. Well, yeah, four, I think it is on a Sunday, isn't it? Well, there's been a lot of the news recently that the big supermarkets are losing out to, to Aldi. Yeah. Does that affect you or do you benefit from maybe people do some of the shopping in Aldi but now they'll come, come to you or to everybody? Uh, the quality sort of lower again there, isn't it? Not necessarily. I what think the likes of Aldi and that's all just, isn't it German Aldi or is it? Yeah, isn't yeah, it? yeah. I think it is, isn't it? So it's just different if you want you, your English brands, you can't get them there really. But, oh. I, 
have one more did question. You, did, you watch, did you watch with like all the restaurants and all that that are yeah. around Alan Rose? Do they get their meat from you or? I can't be bothered with them. No. Sting you for money every time. Every time I've done restaurants. I do do like, um, don't do schools, but I'll do like fire stations and a couple of NHS stuff and things like that that you know you're going to get your money off. Mm. But like, yeah, over the years I've served loads of restaurants and then you're chasing them for money, you close down and just more hassle and more paperwork. You, you constantly keep them in check on accounts and things like that. But I'd rather have someone come in, pay me for it and it's done from there and then. Amen. Amen. Yeah, get a staff discount. We give them 25%. Staff discounts. No one's asked me about profits or anything like that yet or anything. Do you make profit now? Sorry? Do you make profit now? To make profit? Yeah, how yeah, it's worked. worked. <coughs> it's actually the supermarket to do it different. I think a lot of other things do it different. We try and do a set markup to say, if it was 20%, I can tell you how much it is, but if it was 20%, if it was 30%, if it was 40%. So no matter what we buy in the shop, we try and make a certain, like, set profit on everything. Do you usually make more profit each year or less? Um, try and keep it the same so we don't get too greedy, really. We don't want to... You don't want to take the myth, do you, and put your price in, I'll price yourself and things like that. What's the annual profit? What? What's the annual profit? The annual profit is generally set at whether it be 30%, 40%, 50% of the turnover. Does that answer your question? It's getting through a subject there. How much do you make? Loads. Loads. I've just been to the last three weeks. Is Subway your biggest competitor? For the sandwiches, yeah. I suppose it's the only one really doing the sandwiches along there. But the same thing again. If you had one of our butties. What? It's, it's, it, it is a different product, isn't it? And Subway do. You do the meal deals, which I'm not doing. And I think. Yeah, I think we should really. I think we should do a bit more like on the promotional side. Well, if you've shopped with us, you give me some feedback. What do you think I should be doing different at lunch times? The queues are horrendous. Sayers, yeah. Yeah, and they do the same again there, like Subway, aren't they? They do the meal deals. I don't think I'd make any more money if I did like a packet of crisps and a drink or whatever with it. But I think it'd be more beneficial to the customer that they're not going somewhere else. Because yeah. you get the sandwich off us and get a drink off us, but they can't get like a cake or something like that. If you want a cake, you've got to go queue somewhere else. So maybe I should do like a sweet product to go with the savory product. <laughs> Can you have sandwiches then? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it has been really successful. What's the most popular? Yeah. Uh, most popular? Pretty, pretty chicken, I think. Just one. On the sandwiches? Just one. Why do you think it'd be better? Have you had a sandwich? No, I haven't. Might be better to do different sizes if you are like quite big together. Like you said before, I'll do like local paper advertising and things like that. And you can drop the paper there. Yeah, yeah. I've got to do it. If it's, if it's customer that has come to us for years. Not really. Um, but I am thinking of going into that because of what I touched on before when we were talking about the parking. So if I offered a delivery service on a bomb, because, because there's no parking spaces, I thought about doing a delivery service, say, one day a week, say on a Friday night or on a Saturday afternoon, so I'd get a member of staff in to do it. And it's whether it'd be beneficial, or are you just going to get someone going, oh, I can't bother going down there, I can't be, or are you going to get extra business from it? You've got to, you've got to weigh it up after that. Yeah, I I do a lot of like, I'll do deliveries off 
like you know, that sort of thing. He said it's going to cost him a few years, and he can't get out anymore. He lived by me or something like that. I'll take it on my way home and things like that. But it's whether it's beneficial to you as a business. You can't just do it sort of out of kindness of your own heart if you're not making any money out of it because you you'd be like a busy fool, then, wouldn't you? Come, do you have any customers? You can borrow away just for your stuff. Yeah. Um, Christmas time, I had a few deliveries. We had a shop for a short while in West Kirby over the water and we closed it down because that wasn't particularly successful. Um, but we didn't want the shit, long story. But I've got like quite a few customers who've got Christmas orders. So we did, and you say about deliveries, we sent a van over to West Kirby for some of our old customers over there at Christmas. And probably each person spent about 80 quid with us, things like that. So it was worth doing. We used have more than one shop. Not anymore. We had, we had, going back years ago, we had one in Little Strand, one in Old Swan, the one in Allen Road, and then we had the factory as well. The factory was like supplying and everything. It was just, when I was talking about percentage markup on your profit, um, because we couldn't police, I talk about policing and making sure everyone's spot on what you're doing, um, we were making less money when we had three shops than we are just having one shop. Because the profit was down, the staff, the staff wages were like sky high, and then we put like a big extension on our roads instead of on the factory, so you rent and rates and everything on the three shops and the factory, put it all into one business, and now make probably more money than we did back then. Yeah, you have to, when you've got a business, if you like, say, say you've got your turnover there, just say you've got, say you're taking that much money a week, you want your wages to be, we work on um, like about 12% of your turnover. So if you were to take 500 quid one day, the staff wages should be about 12% of that turnover. Because then you've got your rent, you've got your rates, you've got all your other stuff to pay. So it's, it's, in business it's all about like doing the sums as well. If like, if your wages go high, then something, something's not right, Someone, someone's not pulling your weight, or you've got a member of staff that isn't beneficial to you. It's all like sums all the time. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. Have you gone into like breakfast like things like? No, no, but I should do. That's probably yeah. just being lazy on my behalf because I, I don't get it until nine o'clock in the morning. To be honest, but no, I think we should do because say is not are doing it, aren't they? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that is on my list to sort of do as well. Any what? Brand new products. Yeah. I try different stuff all the time, really. So I wouldn't say they were new, but you get a lot of products that are seasonal. And like with that hot, the hot counter that we've got where we do the sandwiches, we pretty much have the same thing every day, but I try and do a special each day as well, so there's something a bit different. Did you find one of like the celebrity chefs does something with like that? Really yeah. Cut? Yeah, like yeah sat Saturday morning, one of the girls who comes in at nine o'clock on a Saturday morning, she comes in and tells me what's been on the TV. And it's a bit late, to be perfectly honest, because I haven't got a chance to check whether I've got this, what was it this week? Um, some sort of steak, I think it was this week. And yeah, you'll get, you'll sell loads of it. But it'd be nice for me to have an idea what was going to be on the TV on the Saturday. I just want to watch it now. Well, I just want to watch it. It's no good if it's on on a Saturday morning because I can't get the product. I could do with knowing on a Thursday what everyone's going to be watching on the Saturday morning. Because sometimes it can be something you haven't got in stock. Which and you're like 20 customers coming in. I could have made such and such. What you say is you just say what you see on a Saturday and you'll save on a different day. Yeah, the following Saturday. Yeah. Good thing for that man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? I'm trying to think what the last group asked me when they come up to the shop. Yeah, I couldn't get down here last night. How many products do we sell? I've been putting them in the top bottle. years. Because for us again, yeah, it's, um, as well, if I've only got, say, for me, that wall, the selling, selling space, say I've got 300 products, if you like, from there to there, and I'm going to put something in, 
because I, I can't get everything in, I want to get in. And I've got a product in there, and I go, well, I've only sold two of them today. You're going to want to fill that space with something that's going to sell faster, aren't they? So we can take the money. Yeah, yeah. Now, we've gone, in the last, in the last seven years, and thank God, like, it's happening. Every year we got busier and busier and busier. So the old saying as well, if I change something, it's not broken, it's something that I, I try and stick by. Since the improvements are not on the road, has that helped? I don't know that that's not very busy. No, because when Tesco's opened, it was all a big drive to the council and we went to be getting so much money spent on our road, but that was how we got the plan. Um, no, not really. <laughs> Sorry, no, 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 no. you're not know your eggs, you yourself, you're probably going to have to you No. Our egg farm has been with us for like 30 years, um, and the, the, we're expensive. I, I, I actually bought eggs in the supermarket the other day, and they're half price of what I sell, but I can't sell enough eggs, because they're, they're really, really good eggs. <laughs> Another thing as well, you go into a supermarket and they'll have like um, a section of Jewish food, a section of halal food, things like that. That's something I don't really do and I thought about doing have that. Have you got age range food? Like food that's more particularly for old people? Yeah, people? yeah, because like an older person is still, I thought we were saying before, you know what, the ready meals and stuff that you just take home and you just take it in the microwave. And then your old customers will come in and they'll buy a cut of meat that takes longer to cook than it's how they cook like an old fashioned way. So you'd have to be a case of grab you one. Compared to say Tesco, what's your range of products? You say you've got more or less in terms of meat because you need products. Um, more probably. You can't get all because we buy on the bone, you can't go into Tesco's and get more obscure stuff like this sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. we get whole animals in. Yeah, we can not get any part of the animal. The Tesco's don't work like that. Might want to make a note of that. Small parts of the that's the strength of the business. We just arrived. Um, you don't really waste any of it. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have specific times, like specific things, like Saturday mornings, yeah. where like popular time for breakfast stuff. Yeah, well, your lunch time is the main time for the baguettes and things like that for everyone eating. And that will start, your lunch time trade will start at 10 o'clock for all the stuff. And then it dies off about 3 o'clock, so then you start putting less stuff in your counter and things like that. Yeah, just do like outside catering like the cars. Yeah, that's one thing that I've been doing. We'll be using that, yeah. So do quite a lot of that. Um, like money in that. Right, let's do it, please. <laughs> Forty pork chops, forty duck breasts, forty fillet steaks. Um, How much is it worth? Forty ox tongues. Um, and their bill came to on Saturday about eight hundred quid. How much? About eight hundred quid. Their bill came. And I thought. How I get that order? I'm dead honest with you. They have like a runner, you know, for the Echo Arena. So all your bands that come in, get a lot of them have their own chefs and things like that. And I give the runner a drop seat. Of money or whatever, um, for, him, for him to come to me rather than going to Tesco. So if it, if his bill was four hundred quid, I knock ten percent off the bill and give him four, give him forty quid. But that maintains because he could go anywhere. Each time a band comes into Liverpool, they come up and meet. They come to us. And on the Facebook thing that someone asked me about before, that's a little bit of advertising that we won't put on. Can't remember who it was. Still not. Any more questions? No. Right, can you wrap a round of applause for Vicky, please? Just, just before we, we, we go, we've got five minutes.